Paradox Park. This is a quality map for several reasons. Uh, one being, I think it stands out visually and aesthetically from a lot of the other maps like that came with the game. Uh, simply because it's not taking itself too seriously, and it's it's like based off an amusement park. I, like you know, it's not. It's still industrial looking, and it's using the resources of the stock game. But you know, that's still insane. Like you know, all the other maps are trying to be kind of like what you'd see in the actual single player. But then you know, this one's like, yeah, no, no fuck that. Um, anyway, and it has just great flow. Uh, a lot of really good level design in terms of ways to get around and, like, you know, attack people. Um, it is a little bit complicated first time playing, but, you know, you should be able to figure out really quickly how where everything goes. And, uh, yeah, just take a look. All right, so as you can see, it was done by Tom Paradox Mustaine, get it? Um, and of all the, like, the all-star deathmatch people, I think this he's one of the more big names. Like, you know, they're all relatively big, but he was actually, like, already established by the time this game is like uh, like you know out um he has actually so many credits that you know i'm gonna have to give you uh, i'm gonna have to look over here i have a uh, moby games open just to make sure i don't forget anything uh so yeah just for level design alone all right he did he was notable for he helped he did a level for master levels for doom 2 the paradox level go figure but he also worked on final doom as one of the main level designers he helped uh, Quake Mission Pack number one, Scourge of Armageddon. Um, he was one of the level designers of the game Sin, and that game is noted for having some awesome level design. Uh, but he also, like, you know, would go on to do, like, you know, work on Star Trek Elite Force 2, which I heard is a great game. He did some game design on Counter-Strike Condition Zero. And, and, apparently, he even helped with some design work on, like, you know, later releases of Quake. Like, I, I think the remaster. And... I do believe he even helped to work on the 2016 Doom, though I might be wrong. He's also done some, like, studio direction and stuff like that for Fallout 76. And I think one of the expansions for Elder Scrolls Online, but I could be wrong. You know, I don't know much about that. And he's also done, like, you know, art and graphics for some other projects, like Perdition's Gate and stuff. This guy, he, he's done a lot of stuff. So, yeah. You know, he's a really cool guy, at least, like, from a, like, a game design point of view. Anyway, let's talk about the map. I really specifically want to go to one point in this map. As you can already see, again, it, it's a vaguely, it has the vague look of an amusement park, which I really like. Um, it's just, I, I'm trying to find the front entrance here. Because there is actually, in this map, an entrance. Which is supposed to be what it is in the, you know, well, I just picked up the... At least you know this map has got a displacer, which is good. Also, I'll explain that beeping right now, just to get it out of the way. This map unlike, is kind of like sub-transit, where there's a central like little train thing, and you absolutely bet your ass you can turn it on and ram people with it. Obviously, you want to turn it on for great like justice anyway, because why wouldn't you want to have this running at all times? You'd have to be a silly fool that like you know sniffs farts or something like that. So yeah, anyway, we're going to ride this up to the front of the um, map here, where here it is. So obviously you can see, nice little thing, it's supposed to be the front gate here. Now, this front gate area is interesting because you got this little water area here. Uh, this map has a higher than normal amount of, of Half-Life 1 ma uh, weapons in it. Or say Half-Life 1, I mean base Half-Life. A lot of the like All-Star Deathmatch maps here rely more on like the Opposing Force map like weapons. But, you, you know, the, the, you, like first of all, you got the Snarks here. But, hell, you got the Hive Hand down here. Most people would go with the Shotgun down there. But, you know, no, not, 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 not here. Anyway, so yeah, if you go down here, you got some batteries and stuff like that. Go grab those, and you gotta get some health. It's a good little place to hide, and like, you know, you can obviously send out the uh, hive hand here, and it'll home in on some fools. So, you know, take advantage of that. Um, also, you got a rocket launcher here, but you know, that's just the rocket. Who gives a fuck about a rocket launcher? You got a shotgun. This, this map is just chock full of weapons and goodies. Car carousel snacks. You know, I'm not a big fan of them, but car Carnival Snacks, I absolutely slap my dick over. Anyway, get up here and get the health kit, because that's always a good time. This building doesn't really lead anywhere, but if you go into it, you get a good old satchel charge and an SMG, as well as some grenades and an HEV thing. So this is a little good place to hide. By the way, don't worry about uh, the um, rail there if you walk on it. It won't shock you or anything like that. You can also get another med kit here. Sadly, none of the vending machines I tried... Um, what actually, you can't interact and they don't give you anything, which is a shame. Missed opportunity there. Come on now, Mustaine. Anyway, so yeah, there's a little area you can hide over here, which actually has some ammo in it. That's a nice little thing. I would have put a weapon there, but oh well. If you get up onto the 
stack here and you're quick, you can grab the gauze, which is always a good idea. There's never a moment where not ha the having the gauze is not a good idea. And you know, there's a lot of open places to run around and stuff like that. If you come up here, you get one of two long jumps on here because there's actually two long jump modules in the map. Um, which way does the... I think this goes... This way. By the way, you can jump the uh, train, but you definitely want to be careful. So we're going to go ahead this way. We'll go in the direction of the train. You got these corridors here. And these corridors... Uh, make up a good chunk of the map above end a little above ground and below ground Or I should say like you know the main floor like main level and there's a sub level We'll get to that anyway, so in this area you got another shotgun grab that if you don't have it You got some places to like you know you got these ledges on the side which you can easily get used to get onto here If you don't have the long jump and I'll just show The sick jump bruh. It's pretty cool pretty wizard. Um, you can go through here You know obviously you don't have to ride the thing if you don't want to but you know just be aware of it if you know, it's going or not. You don't want to get hit by it. Uh, you got some nice stuff here. You got the battery. You got Dave Mustaine being interesting and using the unused uh, SMG pickup that was in Half-Life. If you've never played that, uh, there was this little thing fully programmed in the game. Which would give you, like, you know, I think almost all of your SMG ammo back. Which is probably why they cut it, just for it being too overpowered. Uh, none of the official maps in that game use it, but there's actually... This isn't even the only official ha opposing force map that uses that. If you get up here, you can grab a spore launcher, which isn't terribly useful in this map because the spores are far away from it. But if you have it and you happen to run into those, go get it. I'm getting myself a little bit confused here. So this was the shotgun area. So if you come down here, obviously get the battery. You could also come into the little tower here, which is where we started, and obviously... Get the sniper rifle. There's no reason not to grab that. Good sniper spot, obviously. And there's a lot. Basically, just take this and use it where you think a good sniper spot is. Because this one's good, of course. But people are going to be firing at you. If you have the gauze or the long jump, you can actually get over on top of here. And, like, you know, you can do some stuff up there. Attack, you know, hide, stuff like that. On this side, you got some rocket launcher ammo. You got some more nothing over here. I actually thought there was a, like, you know, crossbow ammo here. But no, but you know, there's, there's a lot of places to fight, you know, stuff like that. Here's this little building here, which I don't know if I showed off. Uh, yeah, here it is. This will lead into the under areas, which we'll talk about later, just so I don't get too confused here. Alright, moving on. We'll, we'll come back to that later. You got this little, like, bunker area here. You gotta watch, watch this hole here. You'll see why in a bit. Uh, if you take this way, it'll lead you into this area here. Which I believe is the next area that the train goes into. I want to check real quick before I talk about it. And this area too, as you can see here, is an easy way to get onto the actual tracks itself if you want. I think the... You, by the way, don't ever worry about how... And keep this area in mind too, as you can see. No, I'm going the wrong way. My bad. I've ruined it! I blew it! I'm a, I'm a freaking heathen. You'll never be able to trust me ever again with any of these maps. In fact, if you trusted me with any of these map videos... Then, you know, you made a really great mistake. So, anyway, here we go. This is the area, yeah. Oh! 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 Anyway. You know, that, that was funny for, like, a second. I've already blew in it. Yeah, fucking Joykov! Anyway, in this area, this is a really wide open area, so be careful. You got some grenades here and another way to get back onto this alongside the batteries. You got some more batteries. There's just a lot of batteries on this map for your armor. You know, you got a lot of areas to, like, you know... And the slope of this map means you can kind of duck and hide a little bit more than, like, you know, some other open areas. Do be careful, though, because obviously if you're standing, someone's going to see you. Grab the health kits here, of course. Good time guaranteed for all. Get that SMG. Get that those satchels. Get Just get everything. Uh, surprisingly, the barnacle isn't as useful as it is in some other maps. Like, you know, you want to grab it and you want to make use of it. But there's not as many places to grapple. So, you know, that's, that's another reason why, you know... You'll want to, like, rely more on, like, cover and, like, you know, the, like, jumping around in, like, the tunnels here in this map. If I haven't... I didn't really make that point clear, but you want to be careful about staying out in the open here. So, yeah, this is where you can get to... You can't get to the next area, um, exactly from here. You have to take this tunnel here. Um, again, keep an eye on that hole. Can't trust that hole. And this is where you get to the final of the, like, the little outdoor areas here. Get on top of this building here so you can grab the rocket launcher. You know, if you want, you can jump on this door and wait for someone to come down here. Especially when you're playing with fewer people. Obviously, I recommend eight people because I just do. 
Trust me, this map actually will work with like 12 to 16 people just fine though. But you know, I always just gotta go with 8. Obviously want to get the machine gun. This area, is, this area, if you can't tell, is really important because a lot of... You got both the machine gun and the rocket launcher here. Now we're back to this area here. Grab the crossbow bolts here, or like, you know, or whatever you want to call them because the crossbow is actually there. Alongside a charger and our old pal, the Magnum. See? There's a lot of Half-Life 1 maps in this, uh, or... A lot of Half-Life 1, um, weapons in this map. Base Half-Life. Get the other uh, long jump if you haven't. And we're about to go into the, uh... Kind of under area here because there's still some goodies to be had. But yeah, this is I wanted to show off the rest of the rail real quick. So yeah, don't ever worry about how high up these rails go, by the way. You'll always be able to climb up them, which I think was probably intentional. Just to, you know, add to the openness. You should not be able to climb this, but you know, you just can. Anyway, so yeah. Also, if you the long jump here, you can do some sick stuff and just jump that. Of course, if you don't mess it up like I just did. Oh well, it is, it is what it is. So anyway, now with- oh yeah, by the way, I always forget about this. There's also- you can get some, uh, AR grenades on top of that. Pretty nifty. So let's climb into the center of the earth now. This will lead us to the final little catacomb area here. Which I suppose is supposed to be the, like, the interior inner workings of the park. Now, I brought up that hole earlier because if you go into this hole- Never mind, I forgot- I thought that was the ladder that led to it, but I'm just an idiot. Instead, if you come down this way, this is the one way you can get to the, uh, basement, in you will. Um, and you can also get to the basement a little bit easier from the inside of this building. Now you descend into the center of the earth and go over here to get one of the most important things about this map. Like, you know, any map. The displacer, always a good time, except I already have it. And if you go this way, is another way you can get to one of the, This little area, this building I always forget about. Obviously, a health kit is really important. But, but, if you keep going this way... Um, you'll lead you to this area here. Remember that open one? I always just forget this little... Like I said, this map is a little bit complicated at first. Grab the, uh, shotgun there too if you need it. Like, this map is a little bit confusing, so your first playthrough might, you might get a little lost. It's not candy one, though. It's a little easier than that. Okay, so first, though, obviously you can get across into this other little underground area here. Where the shock, uh, roach is. You know, I, I can't help but feel that should be right next to the water in the map, but oh well, there's only a little pool as it is. So yeah, you got the um, Desert Eagle here if you want it. You can come up this way, grab some spores finally for your spore launcher. Also some more batteries, because who doesn't love batteries? And you will find yourself back into the entrance here. I deliberately neglected to mention this one, just for that reason. Actually, I didn't, but never mind. Move! Anyway, um, if you go this way is where you can get back to the kind of like the sniper area here. This will lead you that way. Now, the final little thing I want to bring up here is that hole in the wall. On the roof, sorry. I, I'm directionally challenged, I suppose. So yeah, if you go back this way and you climb up here, you'll find this little cubby hole here. And you can just start raining grenades down here. You can be a real asshole. Especially on a full server. This is some nice easy ways to get some kills. But obviously someone's going to notice you're doing that, and someone can come up here. Though you can try to dissuade them with their grenades. And yeah, that's really this map. This is a really, really awesome map. And, you know, especially by, like, you know, de like you know old school, like, you know, deathmatch standards. I don't feel that- I feel like this one is a little bit underrated, because I've never mentioned and seen this mentioned before in great, like, deathmatch maps. Because, you know, to me, this is right up there, but oh well. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot- I always forget about this one, too. There's another gauze if you want it. Though the weird thing is, I don't think you could get up here without having already having the gauze. No, I because there's no barnacle place or anything. The barnacle has nowhere to attach here. Like the only place the thing that barnacle attached it into in this map is other players or like you know the spores. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So far of all the opposing force maps I've done this with, um, this is the only one I could full, wholeheartedly recommend. That you give it a shot in Half-Life Base because, it, as I alluded to in the uh, Posing Force proper video for this map, um, the, the, this map uses a lot of Half-Life Base weapons, and that transfers over, obviously, the fact that when you play it in Base Half-Life like this, there's actually still quite a few weapons and, like, you know, items spawning in. So, you can actually get a version of the map that, you know, is almost as fun as playing it in Base Half-Life, I mean, Posing Force, except slightly quieter. But I would still recommend say that if you like your base Half-Life and you ne absolutely need a new map to play in that and you happen to have Opposing Force and for whatever reason you don't 
want to play that map in Opposing Force, which, you know, Opposing Force, I don't remember having a, a rather active online community, then, yeah, maybe try to, like, put this one in there. I, you could, you're not going to go wrong. Yeah, because there's, like, shotguns, there's a crossbow, there's even a magnum. I mean, the satchels still probably don't work, but, hey, you even got a hive hand, you got snarks, you got rocket launchers, you got two rocket launchers, you got two long jumps, you got two gods. It just works. It just This is just a map that, you know... I don't know if Mustaine ever intended that it to do what someone would do what I'm doing right now, but it almost feels that way. But that's that's just conjecture. It's probably not true at all. I don't know why that person didn't pick, like bot there didn't pick up the hive hand, but whatever. Their funeral, not mine. Hell, you know my it supports my theory even more because the barnacle doesn't even like you know I, br I remember I brought up in the opposing force video that like there's no spot really. To use the barnacles like you know uh, grapple hook feature well you know a lot of the other opposing force maps you know so they put in spots to use the oppo like you know the grapple hook and some of them you actually need to use it to get to certain spots not this one no there's just you can get everywhere and there's not like you're losing anything anyway because there was no like you know grapple hook spots to begin with it's so weird maybe i'll have to hunt down mustaine and ask him at some point oh yeah better activate that that's no good just leaving that like sitting there that's better. Also, because as you can tell, that thing will start meh, 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 if it's not if it doesn't move. So, you know, it's fucking annoying. You want to turn that shit off ASAP? Yeah, that's the most disappointing thing about Half Life: Opposing Force is that power assist movement activated was taken out of the long jump. Ha! Oh, that was a direct hit. I love it. Makes me feel good about myself. Oh! I am a monster! I mean, I guess this sniper spot's a little bit pointless now, but, you know, hey, there's still a ton of other weapons to grab up here. If you have the cross... Well, that was a fucking monster shot. It's like, speed, like, holy shit. Go, go, get the gauze! Get the gauze! Oh! Oh, God! Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, shit! Can we do it? No. So yeah, this, play this one in Half-Life. It actually works really damn well. You know, I gotta be completely honest. After playing this for so long, it does get a little bit tiring hearing the uh, heart, like, you know, the heart monitor dying. When people, like, the sound effect, that this one. Like, I get why they do it, and it's not horribly annoying, but after playing this game for, like, so many hours consistently over the last, like, several months, you, it starts wearing on you a little bit. You kind of just wish it was like, you know, Quake, where it's like over faster. Or just like, you know, a quick voice clip or something, you know? Or a Gibbs sound. Like something like that. Or do what Team Fortress Classic does. Just have the voice clicks. Because I ain't nearly as tired of that as I am the heart rate monitor. Oh well. Damn, auto weapon switching. You know, that's something, speaking of, like, older FPSs and Quake and stuff, that's actually a problem I have in a lot of old ones, not just this. Where, regardless of what weapon, if the weapon's better or stronger, or more useful, or whatever it is, the game just insists of switching to the new weapon every time you pick it, like, you grab it. Like, every single time you grab a new weapon. Yeah, no, gotta switch to that. Doesn't matter the circumstances or anything. I mean, some Quake source ports, let, like, like, let you still, like, you know, even Duke 3D source ports. Like, you know, just source ports for a lot of games let you turn that off. Because it's horribly annoying. Like, right there. I want the Displacer out. It's my most powerful weapon, even if it's hard to use. See? Look at the killing potential of that. And then you switch back to the fucking pistol after that, just to add insult to injury. You know, you think by 98 we would have figured that out by, like, that's kind of an annoying, like, you know, universal feature. But oh well, I shouldn't be complaining that hard, I guess. You... But he did, did disappeared and I... Oh, I killed him. I genuinely thought... I didn't realize I killed them and I thought they, like, did a vanishing act or something. Absolute bizarreness. Wait, what? I did... I swear I went over that shotgun and it didn't pick up. Did you see... It's on the footage, damn it! The proof is right there! Balls! Oh yeah, you know what? I forgot to do this time. Nope, reverse. Hold on. Well, that took a surprising amount of effort to kill him. Oh well. 
Hi. Bye.